Hello and welcome to D6 Tabletop. We're kicking off the new year with a 1,000 point tournament with a difference down at Atlas Tabletop Gaming in the Gloucester Keys. What's the difference, I hear you ask? Well, in this tournament, there are list building restrictions in a bid to stop the big meta units or an army dominating at a smaller game size and points. When building your lists for this tournament, you can only have a maximum of two battle line and dedicated transports, and a max of one unit of everything else available to your army. Also, when you begin the game, no units may have a combined wound total of more than 24. That includes any and all attached heroes with their bodyguard units, so things like a 10-man termi block with captains, Gaz with a large retinue of mega knobs, or Abaddon and his terminator block are all out at this reduced number count. This made for some interesting armies and lists at the event, as some units that you normally don't see came back to the table. So let's have a look at my list then. For this tourney, I thought I would take my Admech again. After their last run out, I decided I thought I would take the Radzone Corp Detachment, which allows me at the start of the game and at the start of every turn afterwards to potentially cause mortal wounds for any of my opponent's units in their deployment zone, as well as cause battle shock in the first turn. It's up to the opponent to decide which option they would like to take. I've built this list around hoping to cover board control and react quickly to counter or prevent my opponent from moving, allowing my heavier guns with different anti-keywords to take out the opposing units in a war of attrition. For this to work best I need to maintain auras from characters and units and use strats to allow me to get every inch out of the units that I can. They're not called admin mech for nothing after all. Starting off we have a 10 man unit of Skatari Vanguard, with all the different guns available to them and a Skatari Marshal attached to grant them full rerolls to hit. He also has an enhancement to give them stealth, and the main rifle on these guys is Anti-Infantry 4, and the other guns feature Precision, Anti-Vehicle, so they've got a bit of everything. I'm hoping they'll be able to take off some Chaff units whilst giving a bit of extra utility where able. Five Rust Stalkers, with their 7-inch move, they're pretty quick, and they're also Anti-Infantry 3 in combat. With four attacks each, they're pretty nifty. They're here as an anti-chaff roll and to cover off secondaries. Three Sulphur Hounds, similar to the Rust Stalkers. These have got a move of 12 and are here to react fast and score points. they got a little bit of shooting and a bit of melee, but their main job is there to score points. Two Chicken Walkers with Taser Lances. With a 10-inch move, the ability to advance and charge, and anti-walker 2, their main task is to fly up the board and kill anything with the walker keyword, such as Dreadnoughts and Battle Suits, before they get a chance to wreak havoc on me. They're also pretty good into medium infantry with four attacks each, sustain two, and lance on the charge. Strength seven, minus two, and two damage. They'll probably do pretty well into some marines. Six breaches, three of these are armed with anti-infantry two guns, and the other three are armed with anti-vehicle four. They get reroll ones to hit natively built into the unit, and if they're within six inches of the vanguard, they'll reroll all hits. They're led by a tech priest manipulus, with the enhancement giving them sustained hits, and I can also pay a CP as one main strat to make them also lethal hits. So that'll be auto wounding on sixes and also exploding on sixes to grant me more chances to wound to roll afterwards. One disintegrator tank. I've given it the indirect fire cannon as it's the only unit that could really bring any indirect fire and on this small board I'm hoping it will take out any units hiding behind cover that are scoring points for my opponent. With a Tech Priest Engine Seer alongside to heal him and grant him a 5 up fill no pain, the Engine Seer has got the enhancement that allows my Radiation Army rule to have a range of their deployment zone plus 6 inches, meaning that it will be more effective for longer in the game. I hope. That's my list, let's get in to Game 1. Game 1 I'm playing Raph and his Tau. We're playing Sweeping Engagement Deployment, Primary Objective, Sites of Power, and mission rule, chosen battlefield. Tower my main army, so thankfully I know what, what I'm up against here. The two main threats he's got on the table for me are the two broadsides armed with railguns and long strike. He's got a ghost kill, which I can't do much about because I can't get into range of it to shoot it because of its lone op rule. And he's also got breaches in a devilfish for the breacher bomb, but they're mainly behind cover, so I can't do a lot with them anyway. So my main thoughts here is I can't tackle the broadsides and the long strike at the same time. So I move away from the broadside so they can't see me, and I focus everything in to try and get rid of long strike as quickly as possible, 
to allow me to move without too much worry. Now because my tank's got a indirect gun, I leave it behind cover the entire game. You can't see it to shoot it and it can pop off indirect fire at whatever it wants. Mainly infantry. By whittling down his pathfinders, I'm stopping him from being able to do his best version of guiding his units. And then I'm using my breaches to get rid of vehicles as quickly as possible. I'm able to remove long strike and start whittling down onto his infantry units being able to remove some pathfinders with my vanguard because they get three shots each anti-infantry four they're quite nice and pathfinders already got a five up save so the weight of dice was certainly in my favor once i got rid of the big units i managed to get my anti-walker two chickens up the board and charge into the ghost kill which has got the walker keyword meaning that I managed to kill it in one round of combat, allowing me to secure good board presence and board control and keep scoring for the duration of the game. With the final score being 98 to the Admech, 23 to the Tau. Good game, I think just the fact that I managed to get out of the box faster and control the board, allowing me to dictate what Raph was allowed to do and what he could do and what I could shoot at first, really helped me secure the board control and score the points here. So with that moving on, let's move on to game two. Game 2 that I'm playing Harry and his Eldari, the dreaded Eldar are here on the table. More dreaded is the fact that he's brought an avatar. At a thousand points, an avatar. So, my main thing is to ignore it. I cannot beat that thing in combat, I've got very little in my army that could beat it. So, what my plan to do here is, is I kill the rest of the unit so he can't get on the scoreboard, so whatever I lose each turn to the avatar is fair game. He's also got a fire prism, that needs to go quick. He's got Rangers, unit of Wraith Blades, Bar Seer, Spirit Seer, and some bikes. We're playing Take and Hold, Search and Destroy, and Chosen Battlefield. I get first turn in this game, which is exactly what I need, because that Fire Prism has to go. Now with Admech, you need to choose at the start of each turn whether you want to give the entire army Assault Weapons, or the entire army Heavy Weapons. I usually always choose Assault Weapons, because I'd rather have the speed and mobility across the table. I use this to get me as fast as I can across the table and get firing lines on that fire prism. My anti-vehicle four breaches with the full rerolls managed to get it down to one wound and I managed to get rid of that one wound with my indirect fire from the tank. Really not what it was aimed for, really not what it was designed for, but I only had to chip one wound off and I managed to and got rid of the fire prism, therefore that was a big threat removed. Now, Wraith Blades can be brought back each turn thanks to the Spirit Seer, so that made it a bit annoying. But with Anti-Infantry 2, it's quite handy to keep them down at low numbers. So I managed to remove a couple, get them down to about two. Yes, one kept going back, but they were never at full strength for pretty much the whole game except for the first turn. And as I expected, anything that was charged by the Avatar died. But by the time that the Avatar was in my deployment zone i'd managed to get into his deployment zone and threaten all corners of the board and as i hadn't yet drawn the secondaries of engaging all fronts deploy signals deploy teleport homer and all the other stuff that gains me more points of being in his deployment zone that forced him to then start coming back towards me wraith blades are slow so that allowed me to capitalize on board control scoring the points and at the end of the game it was 82 to the admec 38 to the aldari Good game, and again, my ability to be able to control the board and remove his scoring units helped me win that. If it was a straight-up fight, I would have lost that hands down. It's Eldar. They get so many rerolls. But being able to prevent him from scoring is what won me the game. So with that, moving on to game three. Game three, then, I'm playing Luke and his Space Wolves. This is a very tasty list. He's got Bjorn. He's got a Redemptor Dreadnought. He's got a Repulsor. He's got 10 Assault Intercessors. He's got Infiltrators and a few other bits that I've forgotten. But it is a very strong list out of the gates. And it is not really what I want to be fighting into. Especially as you can see the terrain on this board shows one obvious choke point and not much else to get around. We're playing Priority Targets, Dawn of War and Chosen Battlefield. I managed to get first turn after my Radiation Bombardment. Didn't really do a lot. I didn't roll high enough. I went for the pressure approach to try and remove some of those dreadnoughts before they had a chance to come down and wreck face. Um, that didn't work. I completely whiffed my all my dice rolls. They abandoned me. 
Uh, my walkers couldn't get in, ch in charge range for my turn, which left them out in the open for his turn, um, allowing him to effectively steamroll me. Um, not the finest showing for the Admech. I ended up being stuck in my deployment zone and in my half of the board, not being able to score the points. Uh, with the final score being 28 to the Admech and 90 to the Space Wolves. Luke then went on to win the entire tournament with a near perfect record. So it was a good game by him, good play by him. And with that, we're on to the final game four. Game four then, I'm playing Chaz. If you've seen any of my videos before, me and him end up playing at nearly every tournament. It's always a great game. He's brought his big bug nids again. And usually I've got Tau against this. And it works quite well because it's like Pacific Rim. I haven't got Tau this time. I've got Admech. I've got Anti-Walker, Anti-Vehicle and Anti-Infantry in my list. I haven't got any Anti-Monster. And I'm facing an entire board of monsters. We're playing Hammer and Anvil with a reduced deployment zone to 9 inches, the Ritual, and Chosen Battlefield. This goes about as well as you'd expect it to. Scoring points early on whilst he's a bit further away, but as those bugs come towards me, I don't have much chance here. He gets his charges in, he absolutely obliterates everything that he touches. That big bug with the, I want to say long tongues? tentacles whatever it's called it does about 14 attacks in combat it's disgusting it's got a precision shot which he used to get rid of my skatari vanguard straight away meaning that i lost all my re-rolls and stealth abilities i found that with admech although they've got all the anti-words as soon as you play something that they don't have their guns just aren't very strong against much else at base their strength seven eight compared to Anything else, like with Tau, you're relying on strength 8 through to 14 or strength 20-something with the hammerheads. You just haven't got that flexibility in this list. Um, so, yep, he stormed across the board, swiped everything in his path, and I was pretty much just biomass, biometal, biometal and mass, I guess, being eaten by Tyranids, with the final score being 24 to the Admech and 82 to the Tyranids great game it's always a fun game playing jazz so with that let's have a look at the final scores and thoughts on the ad mech so there we have it four games played two wins two losses and a final ranking of 17 out of 28 so pretty middle table um how do i feel the ad mech went oh, i don't know where they sit at the moment in a bit of a weird place when they come off good it's really good. But it has to be the right opponent. I don't think they're an army that you can just take to any game and be able to do the same kind of tactics again and again with. You have to adapt every time you play them, which makes them quite a hard army mentally um, to play because there's no chance to really relax when playing them. I don't think you could probably have a casual game with them. Um... Certainly not in the same regards that you could take, say, an orc list and just charge everything and still be laughing and having fun at the same time. I don't know really know what else I could have flushed out with that list to make it any different, especially within the rules of only one unit. I could have taken several units of breaches and just ran the only real good unit that I think they've got. I really do like the Taser Chickens. I think they're a brilliant unit. I love the idea behind them. I just don't know what else I could have brought or what else I could have done to try and get them on the table. The matchup against Tyranids, I just don't see what else you could bring to take them on. Looking for the Codex, there's not really anything I think particularly good against them, except for maybe putting the big gun on a tank. But that's about it. So yeah, they're in a bit of a weird place. I'm going to keep playing them. I think I'm going to keep them now just for friendly games down the club. I think for the rest of the tournament scene, for the time being anyway, we'll see what the data slate brings out. But I'm going to probably going to be looking towards my Tyranids, my Necrons, my Space Marines. And building up some orcs as an idea next as well. But more of that in more videos to come. So if you've enjoyed this video and you like this kind of content, then please like the video, comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. There's loads of stuff going on. We've got terrain videos. We've got other tournament videos. We've got battle reports. I've just finished a video and posted about having Dawn of War, the PC game, on the tabletop. More of that to come. So thank you for watching. Take care. I'm going to see you on the next one. Goodbye.